China is a figure that has long been in the public eye, and not always for a good reason. From the backlash they received for having Muslim concentration camps since 2018 to trying to cover up for COVID-19 before it spread globally, I think now is a good time to reevaluate our relations with this global superpower. China is a communist authoritarian regime that does whatever it needs to to keep its party in power. From concentration camps to not acting on COVID to refusing to fix their air pollution, China has acted in some inappropriate ways that do not condone our support. Yet, they always seem to get away with doing these things without retribution from government superpowers or us in general. Frankly, this needs to stop. Uh, we must stop supporting a country that seems to have no concern for human rights all over the world. Here are some statements about China's general nature and what it's doing right now. According to the Washington Post, uh, referring to Uyghur concentration camps that are currently in China, uh, the systematic uh, crackdown that is happening in China uh, goes well beyond uh, what past isolated acts of anti-government violence might possibly justify. And according to uh, Stephen Cotton, a uh, historian and professor at Princeton, China is the largest economy, has the largest economy with such an opaque political regime. They hide their pro policy process and they hide their motivation from their own people and from the rest of the world, which just shows how secretive and kind of scary China is. According to Michael Oslin, a writer at the Hoover Institute, a global reconsideration of China is long overdue. Legitimate criticisms and doubt that, China, uh, that China's governments and growth model were long suppressed by Chinese pressure and the willingness of many to buy into the Communist Party's public line. So today I'm going to talk about uh, how China is current, current government is an authoritarian regime that stifles the voice of the people and of dissenting opinion, uh, dissenting opinion and how China to this day continues to commit extremely reckless, if not deadly acts against its own people and abroad that cannot be tolerated and kind of show you how the world as a whole has made little action to res uh, restrict or effectively punish China for the many criminal things it has done due to their large economy. <clears throat> so first, uh, the Chinese government will censor anything that can potentially be a danger to the Communist Party. And you can see this now with uh, in China with China's mistreatment of the Muslim population. Uh, according to the Washington Post, Jerry Shire, uh, government agents have begun purging the Hewis region of visible symbols of Islam, such as mosque domes and mirinets. Arabic, uh, Arabic uh, sorry, uh, script signets have been banned in public spaces as well as the cell of the Quran. So as you can see, anything, like even religion, will be banned if it serves as a possible resistance or threat to the Communist Party. Uh, the Chinese government is also willing to do the same tactics to anyone outside of China itself, so it's just not their citizens. According to uh, Michael Oslin, uh, public shaming of foreign corporations, global influence operations, and elite capture are all strategies Beijing has developed to maintain China's public image. Meaning if you were a company and you said something about, bad about China, they would just simply ban you from trading with their, their people so they wouldn't know any better. <clears throat> China has also gone way past censorship in ways to protect their own party. Uh, according to the Washington Post, in addition to mass detention, uh, the means employed to stop uh, the spread of dissenting opinion against China uh, includes arrests, torture, and disappearance of political uh, and cultural leaders, as well as technological surveillance of the general population. And I believe you can see my point of how China does not deserve to be supported when they do these things, not only to their own people, but to other people who say mean things about them. Uh, my next point is that China has time and time again endangered their own citizens and people abroad by taking reckless, if not malicious, malicious action, actions against both. China has failed, failed to let the world know about the dangers of coronavirus uh, since December, basically since its inception. According to Michael Oslin, uh, Chinese officials knew about the new virus back in December and did nothing to warn their citizens or impose any measures to curb it early on. They also refused to let in uh, foreign ep epidemiological uh, teams, according, uh, including the U.S. Uh, Centers of Disease Control, meaning back in December when we all asked about, hey, what's going on in China? What's this new virus? China refused to release any information or even let us investigate what was going on in their own country which potentially could have saved thousands of, ten thousands of lives. Uh, the Chinese government has also uh, recently come under fire for having Muslim concentration camps in Xinjiang. According to the New York Times, Chinese officials have repeatedly defended 
the indoctrination camps, which are intended to break down inmates' devotion to Islam, deter any separatist tendencies, and turn people into loyal supporters of the Communist Party. Meaning, if you don't support the Communist Party, you're likely to find, uh, find yourself in one of these indoctrination camps. Another note, which uh, seems to be shoved under the rug in recent events, is that China's terrible air pollution has ended thousands of lives uh, prematurely and are magnitudes higher than the WHO guidelines. Taking the top 10 cities in China uh, that have the worst air pollution, uh, they are more than 10 times higher than the WHO guidelines for uh, moderate air pollution. According to Michael Oslin, uh, others may begin to look more carefully at China's environmental devastation and its hundreds of thousands of premature deaths each year from air and water pollution. <clears throat> so now I'm going to talk, show you some actions, the minor actions that have been taken against China but have really no effect and why we need to act. Uh, the U.S. has taken some steps, uh, steps to sanction China. However, the effects seem to be minimal. Uh, as of right now, if you look at a graph, China, over the course of the last 50 years, is at an all-time high for their economy. Uh, leaders are also inconsistent with condemning China. According to the Washington Post, the Trump administration uh, con combinations have ebbed and flowed, depending on President Donald Trump's interest in courting Xi, the Chinese president, for trade concessions. Trump is not alone. Many Western countries' economic interests dictate their China policies. And we need to look past uh, supporting our economies when China has clearly done many disgusting things with their own people and the violations of human rights. But these countries are not alone. Companies also seem to prefer to make a buck or look the other way than uh, condemn China for their actions. According to the New, York, the New York Times, the Mulan filmmakers had thanked eight government entities in Xinjiang, the region in which China uh, uh, where Uyghur Muslims had been detained in mass internment camps. Uh, so, yes, the filmmakers of Mulan thanked the region in which China had internment camps, which is completely uncalled for, and it really just needs to be condemned and not supported in any way, unlike what they did in Mulan. <laughs> so, overall, as we've learned, as I've showed you, uh, China censors its own populace from expressing opposing opinions from the outside world, they show blatant disregard for human rights and keeping COVID and, and, and keeping COVID a secret and keeping Muslims locked up in concentration camps, and little and to no action has been taken against them besides minor sanctions and comp and besides minor sanctions and companies still seem to kowtow to China China for China for profit. <clears throat> Due to China's multiple slights against human rights and free speech, we should not support them openly or with our dollar, even if their exports are economically appealing. In conclusion, uh, the authoritarian regime of China has shown it cannot be trusted with our support due to their neglig negligence on human rights. We must start thinking with our minds and our hearts instead of our wallets and turn away from a regime that has destroyed so many lives all around the world. Companies should also take note of this and stop making concessions for China when China won't even make concessions for its own citizens. Thank you.